The weekly amount spent by a small company for in-state travel has approximately a normal distribution with mean uh, $1,450 and standard deviation $220. First, we need to find the probability that the actual expenses will exceed $1,560 in 20 or more weeks during the next year. So what we need to consider here is that we're going to need two random variables. Okay, One will be talking about the weekly amount okay so basically you're going to talk about any given week and you're going to estimate the amount for that week by using the x random variable because you're going to need that in order to find the probability that this amount represented by the x random variable exceeds 1560 per any given week and then when you find that probability per any given week you will be able to use the cumulative or the binomial distribution to estimate 20 or more weeks like that, right? So you will need two random variables. So let's find this first random variable. This is the weekly dollar amount. Weekly dollar amount, okay? Spent by the company, okay? And we need to find the probability that this random variable exceeds 1560. Okay, and to do that, of course, you're going to have to standardize. You notice that we can use the z variable in relation to the x variable being x minus the mu divided by sigma. So mu represents the population mean, or the in this case, we're going to say that it's the mean um, uh, amount spent per week. And the standard deviation will be the weekly amount. Standard deviation is $220 in this case. So we can write this as x minus mu divided by the sigma is equal to z. So this changes to be a z. Now notice that when we subtracted mu and divided that result by the standard deviation, we have to do the same thing on the right side of this inequality. So we can write this as 1560 minus the mu divided by the standard deviation sigma. And now I'm going to substitute in the numbers so you see what this becomes. So this becomes probability of z being greater than 1560 minus the mean amount spent per week 1450 divided by the standard deviation amount per week which is 220 dollars so this is equal to the probability of z being greater and this is actually equal to 110 divided by 220 exactly one half 0 0.5 so what this asks you is to find the probability that the z exceeds 0 0.5 and to do that you subtract from 1 the probability that z is less than or equal to 0 0.5. And notice this is going to become handy because we cannot use a z table directly to find the probability when z exceeds the target value 1 half. Rather, we can find this probability using the c table, right? Because whatever probability we find, these are the probabilities the uh, four digits, uh, four decimal places, that is, these account for the z values less than the target value, right? So we, we would need this uh, transformation anyway, 1 minus the p less than or equal to 0 0.5, right? So this is going to be handy. So notice this is going to be 1 minus, now let's find the target value of 0 0.5 for the z. First, you're going to, to use the normal table properly, you're going to use the first column put under the z because that will give you the tenths value of the z and you we, we know that we need 0 0.5 and this is exactly here and these will give you the hundredths places for z but luckily here 0 0.5 the target value the um, hundredths place is just zero right it's the second zero right here so we we just need this column and we need to align the second column with the row in which we chose it to be 0 0.5 because this is our target value right 0 0.5 so when you catch the row you go across 
And this is the desired column because we said that the hundredth place is zero. So we stop there. And this is going to be the probability value that we need, 0.6915. So let's copy down. 6, 9. And was that 1, 5? Yes, 1, 5. Now this is going to be, this is going to be 0 0.3085. 0.3085. Now, this is just the probability of a weekly amount exceeding 1560. Now, we're going to use that because we found the probability to find the probability that the actual expenses will exceed 1560 in 20 or more weeks. In 20 or more weeks. So, to do that, you're going to need binomial distribution, right? So, let, let's Let's uh, introduce the second random variable, y, and this will be the number of weeks in which weekly dollar amount exceeds 1560. Okay? So to do that, uh, we're going to need binomial distribution, but binomial will be too much to handle. But let's think about what the parameters are, are going to be for this. So in the binomial distribution, we're going to need n and we're going to need the probability, the p-value. So n is going to be what? n is going to be 20. Uh, I'm sorry, 52, because we're talking about a year, right? So 52 weeks per year. So n is 52. And the probability that we just found of uh, per, per single week for the amount to uh, exceed 1560 would be 0.3085. Okay, so this represents the distribution, the binomial distribution for the y random variable. Now, we need the probability of the y being greater than or equal to 20, right? Because it says 20 or more weeks during the next year. So as you know, binomial will be t too much to use because basically, um, well, you can express this as one minus the probability of y being less than or equal to 19. You can do that, that's fine. But again, that will be too much to handle because there will be 19 terms for which you will need to use the binomial probability density function, right? And that's going to be so many calculations, and you don't have time for that. In order to uh, avoid that, you can approximate this probability using normal distribution, okay? And to approximate this using normal distribution, and notice that since we're talking about 52, 52 is pretty high. I mean, it's pretty high for normal approximation. You need at least 30 to approximate uh, the binomial by normal, which is fine. We, we got 52. This is more than enough. So now we need to estimate the mu and the standard deviation in order to use the, in order to use the um, normal. So normal has what? Normal. And I'm going to use another color this time so as to not confuse you. So the uh, as you know, the um, mean number is going to be n times the p, right? n p. We know that for the binomial. And n p is going to be 52 times this probability. 52 times this probability. And this is equal to what? This is equal to 16.0. 42. Okay, so this is the mean number. This is the mean number of weeks per year during which the amount, the weekly amount, will exceed 1560. And now, of course, the, the um, standard deviation of the number of weeks during which the weekly amount will exceed 1560 will be NPQ under the square root, right? So you should know that formula, NP, 
and Q is going to be 1 minus P. So I might as well just write that so that you know what Q is. NPQ is NP times 1 minus P inside the square root. And that's going to be basically NP times the 1 minus P. Right, so it's going to be 16.042 times the 1 minus P. And 1 minus P is 1 minus 0 0.3085. 1 minus 0 0.3085. Okay, and that's going to be, let me use the calculator, 16.042 times 1 minus this will give us, and square root that, will give me 3.3306.22014. Okay. So now that we found that, now that we found that, we can use the probability here. So 1 minus the probability of y being less than or equal to 19 is going to be 1 minus, now let's use the normal distribution. And again, the same thing like we have the relationship here, we, we, we're going to use y now, y minus mu divided by the standard deviation, right? So it's going to be z. Uh, now keep in mind, that we can use continuity correction because when you're talking about normal versus binomial there will be discrepancies as i indicated in the previous video uh, when you use uh, rectangles you know some parts of the rectangle appear outside the curve area and some parts uh, and vice versa right so so i'm going to use less than 19.5 right so when you use continuity correction you will add one half to the upper boundary Right? And this becomes less than because 19 was the greatest integer value possible. That's why it cannot equal 19.5. It's going to be less than. Okay? Minus the mu. Mu was what? 16.042 divided by the standard deviation, which was 3.3306.22014. Okay, so that's going to be 1 minus the probability of z being less than, so let's see, 19.5 minus 16.042 divided by 3.3306.22014. And this is going to be 1.0. Now I'm going to round it to the nearest hundredth, of, as you understand, this, the target z value, because we're going to, we're going to, need that we cannot go to a thousandth place right that's that will be too much for the table so hundredths place it says 1.038 so i'm going to round it to 1.04 to the nearest hundredth okay so one minus let's see what that is 1.04 let's use the table so first like i taught you we're going to start with this column we're going to go to one because one point and then what did we need 1.04 Right, so 1.04, so uh, we need 0.04, right, and that's going to be this column. So we're going to use this row 1.0, and we're going to we're going to go across until we stop at 1.04, as you can see here. Okay, so again we're here, we stop here, and that's going to be the target probability value. So 0.8508. 0 0.8508. And let me just double check that again to make sure I copied it right. Yes, 0 0.8508. So this is going to be this is going to be 0 0.1492. So finally, we've arrived at the answer for part A which gives us the probability that the actual expenses will exceed 15, 16, 20 or more weeks during the next year. Okay, now, part B. So this was part A. And now part B. Part B will be done in the similar fashion. First, we're going to use, and uh, might as well just separate this, this work. So first we're going to use, again, the random variable x. And I'm sure you already understand. I'm, I'm, I don't need to label the x and y. 
So we need the probability of x being greater than 1500 now, right? We need to find that, being greater than 1500. So I can go right away to my calculations, the probability of z being greater than 1500 minus the mu, in this case mu was 1450. That doesn't change, right? Because this applies to both a and b, these prime, uh, primary uh, uh, mean and uh, standard deviation. Right, so we can go ahead and copy that down, and this is going to be probability of z being greater than 0 0.5. And then, well, actually, let's see. Uh, no, not 0 0.5. This is going to be a different amount. Now I can't just copy that. So that's going to be 50 divided by 220. Let's see what that is. 50 divided by 220. That's going to be 0 0.2. Three. All right, 0 0.23, and that's going to be 1 minus the probability of z being less than or equal to 0 0.23. So let's see. So 1 minus, now let's see what that value is. Let's find 0 0.23 in the table. So 0 0.2, we stop there, and we go 3. We go 4, actually. 4, um columns to the right until we arrive at uh, 0 0.23. Remember, you're adding this and this. You're adding these z values with these z values to find the total z value. And wh whenever these values cross will be your probability value in the table. Right? So 0 0.23. So this amount plus this amount. So whenever they, these two amounts cross will be the probability. Right? In this case, it's 0 0.5910. 0 0.59. One zero. Okay. So what is that value going to be? Let's see. One minus point five nine one zero. That's going to be point four nine or zero point four oh nine, however you want to put it. Okay. So that will be the probability for the first random variable for weekly amount to exceed or, uh, to exceed fifteen hundred. Now we need to find the probability that the y amount, this is a different random variable accounting for the number of weeks in which weekly amount exceeds, um, uh, well, in this case, it's going to exceed 1,500, so I might as well just rewrite that so that you're not confused with numbers. Number of weeks in which in which uh, weekly dollar amount exceeds 1500, right? Not 1560 this time, just 1500, right? So we need to find the probability of this amount um, being between 18 and 24 weeks, right? So we should write it as 18 y less than 24, right? So this is exactly what's being asked. Between 18 and 24 weeks, inclusive, right? Inclusive means that the endpoints will be included in that range for the y random variable, right? So 18 is included. That's why I'm using the equal or equal to as well, the, the bar underneath, okay? And now we're going to standardize, and we're going to use continuity correction again. Notice for the lower boundary, you have to subtract the half, and for the upper boundary, you will add one half. Okay? And let's see. So what is that going to be? That is going to be, let's see, do we need, uh, yeah, in this case, we will, we will need to rewrite the, the uh, y distribution, the binomial of 52, and the probability is not going to be a 0 0.3085, right? Because we found it to be what? We found it to be 0 0.409, right? Because this is a different amount, right? 1500 versus the um, 1560 before, right? So this probability is 0 0.409, 0 okay? So we also need to find the different mu, 
right? And also standard deviation, right? Because these change as well, because we have a different amount. We don't have 1560, we have 1500 now, right? So NP, right? Mu is the product of NP, so the product of these two numbers, 52 times 0 0.409. So that, how, how, that, how much is that gonna be? 21.268, 21.268. Now the standard deviation will be basically the um, square root of the NP times the one minus P, right? Like it was here in this formula right here. NP times one minus P under the square root. NP was 21.68, 21.268. Times 1 minus p. 1 minus p is 0.591. Right, so if you do this carefully, make sure that you don't make a mistake. Times 0.591. Don't forget to take the square root, otherwise, you will find the variance and not the standard deviation. It's going to be 3.5456. And notice I'm not rounding this because we need a precise standard deviation. Don't round this. Only round the Z values when you're trying to find the Zs, but don't round these uh, parameters like uh, mean and standard deviation. Don't round these. So now, using the continuity correction, we know since this is the lower boundary, we must subtract the half. So it's going to be 17.5, and it's going to be less than now and not equal to because 17.5 is less than the whole number value allowed, right? So it's going to be less than now. Now Z, uh, well, we need to standardize, right? So let's, let's do 17.5 minus the mean minus the mu divided by the standard deviation, 3.5453. Now less than Z, because we're standardizing, is less than. Now upper boundary adds the one half, so it's going to be 24.5. And notice that it's less than as it should be, because 24.5 is beyond the greatest integer value allowed. So 21.268 divided by the same sta uh, standard deviation, 3.54. 5, 3, 3, 3, 2, 7, 1. Okay, so this is equal to the probability. Let's see what that is. 17.5 minus 21.268. That's going to be negative, which is fine. We're going to use a negative Z table. Uh, negative 1.062, right? I'm going to round it to the nearest hundred. So negative 1.06 is less than Z, less than, let's see what that is, 24.5 minus 21.268 divided by 3.5453332711 to the nearest tenth will be 0 0.91. Rounded to the nearest, uh, sorry, to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Now here's how to do this one. So we need the z's only between these two, right? So we don't need the z's to the left of this, right? Because we know the target value of z negative 1.06 in the table will give us the probability, the cumulative probability, or the area of the curve to the left of the z. And we don't need that. So we're going to take the probability of z being less than the upper one because that gives us the cumulative probability or the area under the curve to the left of the z of z 0 0.91 and we're going to subtract the one the part of the area that we do not need which is this the z is less than this so minus the probability of z being less than negative 1.06 okay so let's find so 0 0.91 let's find that first 0 0.9, we found that, and now we need one in the hundredths place, right? This is the zero in the hundred uh, in the hundredths place, but this is the one in the hundredths place, right? Precisely that, 0 0.01, right? So again, 0 0.9, one, 
that's where these two cross to give us this probability value. Point 8186. 8186. 8186 minus the probability of z being less than negative 1.06. Negative 1.06. Here's this negative z table. So you start with the, with the um, you start from the bottom because as you get higher, the values get negative and uh, more negative for the z. So negative 1.06. First, we need to find the 1 in the 1's place. That's it. That's here. So negative 1.06. So we need to go across until we stop at the 6 for the hundredths place. And that's going to be right here. Okay, you can verify that here. You see the 0 0.06. Right, so we stop there. So the probability is 0 0.1446. 1446. And now this answer should give us will be 0 0.674. Okay, this is the answer using the continuity correction. Estimation for the binomial. So this is the probability that the actual expenses would exceed 1500 for between 18 and 24 weeks inclusive during the next year. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. See you in the next video.